Well, hello, Marvelous Kids. Uncle Steve here once again, and today I'm real excited because it's gonna be a special day where we just review everything that we've learned in the last four weeks. Now, if you haven't watched all or even any of the videos that I've done in the last four weeks, that's okay, because we're gonna go over everything that we've learned. Now, if you kids are in one of our home groups that received a box, I'm gonna need you to get out the activity sheet and get one of the pencils out and get it sharpened so you're ready to fill in some answers to some questions I have during our review. Now, the rest of us can just get a piece of blank paper. It can be a piece of printer paper, it can be some white line paper, and also get something to write with. Now, once you get that paper, I'm gonna need you to number it from one to 12. Now our home groups already have their paper numbered from one to 12. So what I want you guys to do right now is pause the video and get the things that you need so that you're ready to answer some questions. Go ahead and pause it now and go get ready. So you guys should all be ready now. So let's get started with our review. Now one of the first things that we learned was what is the Bible? Well, the Bible is a book, just like any other books. It's got pages and words, but when you open it up, you realize it's a lot of books all in one. As a matter of fact, it's 66 books in one. Wow, 66 books, that's a lot. So for question number one, it says, how many books are in the Bible? And you're gonna write in 66. Now I gave you that first one, the rest you're gonna to have to start filling in on your own. But I'll in my review, I'll let you know what the answer is. So let's move a little faster now. Next we learn that the Bible is divided into two sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now the Old Testament has 39 books and the New Testament has 27 books. So for question number two, I need you guys to write in the two different kinds of testaments there are in the Bible. Now at any time, if I'm going too fast, or if you need time to write in the answers, just pause the video. So why do they call these two sections testaments? What does the word testament even mean? Well, a testament is a covenant or a promise. They could have actually called these two sections the old promise and the new promise. So for question number three, it says, what does the word testament mean? And you guys can go ahead and write that down. You see, kids, the Bible is filled with promises that God has made to us that always have and always will come true, no matter what. The next thing that we learned about was who wrote the Bible? Well, God wrote it. That's why we call it God's Word. You know, God didn't actually get out a piece of paper and a pen and sit down and write the Bible. We believe that God inspired all the authors that wrote the books of the Bible. He gave the authors ideas, thoughts, and most important, truths about what he wanted them to write. And then they wrote it down using their own words. Now, a lot of books that are written were written by one, sometimes two authors, but the Bible had more than 40 different authors. So for question number four, you could fill it in. There were more than blank authors who wrote the books of the Bible. So that's what you write for number four is how many authors there were. So kids, we're pretty sure who wrote most of these books, but some of the books, we're not entirely sure who wrote them. But we know that as God inspired the people who wrote them, he also inspired the people who decided which books would be in the Bible. Now, some books might take a year, even two years to write, but we believe that the Bible took over 1,600 years to write. Well, the next thing that we learned about kids was the very first book of the Bible, and it's called Genesis. So question number five is a pretty easy one. It says, what is the very first book of the Bible? And you can go ahead and fill that in. Now, the book of Genesis is filled with a lot of stories that you guys m might know or have heard before. The book of Genesis starts with God creating everything, the very beginning. The word Genesis actually means beginning. So it seems right that they put Genesis at the very beginning of the Bible. So for question number six, it says, what does the word Genesis mean? Well, kids, we learned that in the beginning that God created everything. Day, night, the universe, the land, ocean, trees, plants, animals, and of course, people. You see, he just spoke and everything came to being. God created everything just by speaking. So kids, for question number seven, it reads, God created everything by blank into existence. 
So for number seven, write in how God created everything into existence. Well, next we learned about the first man and woman God created, and they were named Adam and Eve. The Bible tells us that they were made in God's image and that so are we. You see, God also gave us a very powerful and dangerous gift, and it's the power to choose. God loves us and he wants us to love him, but he doesn't want to make us love him. You see, we get to choose to love him. He lets us make our own choices and it's called free will. So for question number eight, it reads, God lets us make our own choices and it's called, go ahead and write down what it's called for number eight. So kids, God gave Adam and Eve a choice to make. He told them they could eat from any tree in the garden where they lived, but they could not eat from a certain tree. Matter of fact, he told them if they ate from that certain tree, they would die. Well, that's when the serpent or the snake came along and told them not to believe God. The serpent told them that if they ate from that certain tree, that they wouldn't die, that they would actually become wise like God. So Adam and Eve had to choose to believe God or believe the serpent. Well, they chose wrong and ate from the tree and sin entered the world. They ignored God and chose their own way instead of God's way. So for question number nine, it reads, what is it called when we choose our own way instead of God's way? So go ahead and write in the answer for number nine now. So it's pretty obvious that when we choose our way instead of God's way, that's called sin. Well, we finished up last week finding out that after sin entered the world, Adam and Eve could no longer live in the garden. They had to leave the garden and they had children and then their children had children and people continued to sin and make bad choices. God's creation was drowning in sin. So at this point, God decided he needed to just start all over. So he sent a flood to destroy everything and everybody except for one family. And the head of that family was a man named Noah. You might know this story of Noah and the ark. So for question number 10, write in the name of the man whose family God spared. Well, after the flood and when the land dried up, Noah's family started all over. And his children had children and their children had children. But the world was still broken and people continued to make bad choices. They built towns and cities and they thought that they were greater than God. Now this is called pride and putting yourself above God is sin. So for question number 11, write down what it is when you put yourself above God. What is that called? Well, I'll give you a hint. We had this answer a few questions ago and it's the same answer for this one. Well, kids, we're almost done. Now remember, God is so wise that all along he had a plan to save us. You see, kids, God loves us and wants to have a relationship with us and he needed to make it possible for us to have a relationship with him. So next week, we're gonna learn about the first part of God's great rescue plan and how he made it possible for us to have a relationship with him forever. So for our last question, I'm sure you guys won't take forever to answer this one, but how long did God want us to have a relationship with him for? Go ahead and fill that in for number 12. Kids, God loves us and he wants to have a relationship with us and he needed to make it possible for us to have a relationship with him. Okay kids, I know that was a lot, but I have one more challenge for you. We're gonna do our memory verse and see if you guys can fill in all the blanks that I have on the screen or on your activity sheet. Now as I do this, you can pause the video at any time so that you have time to fill in the blanks, but I'll give you a hint. All the blanks are the words that I use sign language for. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. It goes like this. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be complete equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Good job, you guys, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for all you created and most of all for creating us in your image. 
We pray that everything we learn today will help us in our relationship with you and help us grow closer to you each and every day. We know how much you love us and we want to love you back by making good choices in all that we do. We pray this all in Jesus' name and we all say amen. Well, thanks for joining us today, you guys. We'll see you next time. Aloha.